Welcome to the Muscle Expert Podcast with Ben Pakulski, one of the world's top professional bodybuilders, an expert on human performance and mindset mastery. Ben dives deep to deliver the strategies of the top experts to upgrade your body, mind, muscle, strength, performance, biochemistry, and how to become the upgraded modern man. Hey, what's up, ladies and gents, Muscle Expert Podcast. Today, we're going to talk to a buddy of mine, Drew Canoli, who is truly an awesome human. And we talk about living your greatest life and your greatest body, and Drew is doing just that. Uh, he is the founder and CEO of a multi-million dollar supplement company, and he's just written a book called You Be You. And we talk a little bit about both expanding consciousness, becoming a great version of yourself, Drew's specific method of finding yourself, finding your inner purpose, being you, the true you. Uh, and we talk a little bit about his awesome supplement company, which you guys are going to be super interested to hear about. So without further ado, enjoy the episode with Drew Cannoli. Yeah, man. So, dude, tell me about this book, You Be You. I'm very curious about this because, uh, as you may or may not know, my journey uh, having transcended professional bodybuilding is very much uh, into the internal journey now. You know, I've transcended the external, or at least I, I've transcended a, comp a, a component of the external world, you know, the idea of, of acquiring things. Uh, and now I'm trying to I realize that the true journey is within. Yeah, beautiful. And that's the journey. <laughs> the only so one. UBU, UBU is about that. It's a step-by-step, -step, simple system. Uh, one is detoxing your life, crushing your limitations, and then owning your awesome. So it's broken down into three parts. The first part is very much about addressing limiting beliefs, um, mind chatter, rackets, as S would call it, things that come up in our life that keep us small and stuck as small little humans versus the big, expansive, awesome, connective, you know, one humanity that is an organism on this planet that we can just tap into and affect change in so many more people. But it takes really getting clear in your own consciousness, as you know, and going within into that portal and then opening up possibility from this place. Man, so beautiful. And I know that. And yet I still some days struggle to tap into that place, right? I, st I struggle to tap yeah. into, um, you know, that deeper inner knowing of greatness and love and uh, that inner joy that exists within all of us and that inner greatness that ex exists within all of us. What is your, you know, your, re your recommendation around reprogramming these limiting beliefs? Yes, I call it identity. It's mm -hmm. your why with your identity. It's your identity plus your purpose. So it's a deeper level of purpose that you're connecting to day in and day out. And I have a process that I walk people through in the book where it's um, it takes some time. I mean, it's work. So don't buy the book if you don't. No question. Want but it's like uh, understanding your why, first of all, really getting deep with what you want other people to say to you once you've accomplished the goal that you're looking for. What do you want to hear? What do you want to feel? And what's the vision for your life? Right. So for you, you know, this beautiful Presley Sky, your daughter, one of the reasons you're so healthy, you still look great. Even 10 years ago when I first like heard about you and met you, um, you've stuck with it is because in the future you want to have grandchildren. You know, you want to play football with your grandson. Like all these things are very powerful messages that you put in your subconscious mind that you're living current real time in. So that reality is being created now. But it takes that identity. It takes that purpose day in and day out because there's days when we hit the wall and we're just we feel stuck as human beings or we get bad news and we turn around and then we fall off the bandwagon with whatever our goal and our desire is. So I think it's ultimately uh, reprogramming your identity and helping people with the belief system that they've installed on their hard drive. The prefrontal cortex of the brain, right? Yeah, exactly. The belief about who we are, who, you know, ultimately yeah. the, the greatest explanation is you're not the person you are. You're the person that you've needed to become because of all the scenarios you've, you've been put, placed into it up until this point in your life. Uh, yeah. that's a, and that's such a hard thing for people to grasp is, you know, you, you've become the person you are in response to, you know, walking toward pleasure, pleasure or avoiding pain as a child. You know, I, I, I realize if I don't do this, I won't get in trouble. Therefore, no matter if it feels good to me or not, I'm just not going to do it. And that's a very um, convoluted place for people to start, you know, diving into and starting to understand. Um, and what I'd like to learn from you is, you know, first I'll tell the audience how I first heard about you, you know, 10 years ago, as you say, I uh, heard a lot about you with Fit Life TV. I heard a lot about you with this 
guy starting this amazing company and I was very intrigued. Uh, and now, man, you've, you've evolved into such a, a leader in the fitness space, a leader in the entrepreneurial space. Um, I'd love to hear a little bit about your story about how you got started, um, you know, down this this journey to transform yourself ultimately, right? It's not just about, yeah. you know, I'd love to hear about the business. I'd love to hear about the book. But first and foremost, like what most people want to know is at some point in your life, you were living in the place where they are now, that place where they don't believe in themselves, the place where you know, they question their ability to, to progress. And now you're crushing it in all areas of your life. And I'm I'm curious to know one how you started and two what the catalyst was yeah so for me it was about seven and a half years ago we actually started fit life tv i was over in tampa florida and um i had a mentor at the time which if you don't have a mentor get one if you're listening to this biggest thing who's your change, mentor do you mind his name's frank and he is this sage in tampa florida he's like 87 years old right Just Dude, i'm in guy. tampa you got to connect us man yeah you'd love to meet frank and such a good guy but I would meet with him every morning for like three years and literally talking with him, I realized that the credit business that I was running, the mortgage company, I was chasing money, I was 40 pounds overweight, I was lethargic, I was tired every single day because I wasn't plugged into what we talked about, the identity. And Frank said, if I do anything else on this planet, make sure you're impacting other people. So I really took it to heart. And I moved from Tampa because outside of Frank, I was hanging out around a lot of toxic people. Yeah. So cutting the toxic people out of my life was the biggest thing. They say you're the average of the five people that you hang around the most and also the five books that you've read this year, right? Or, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I was reading voraciously and I was like these toxic relationships that I have, cut them out, moved to San Diego, knew nobody, bought an HD flip cam, started recording videos every single day plugged into the fact that 30% of the country at the time was obese, overweight, and plugged into the fact that primarily it was like a lot of children growing up. Like everywhere I went in the Midwest, like I just saw these kids that were overweight, that were eating processed food, sugar, dairy, wheat. And I knew if I could lose the weight that I had and be the demonstration through my own transformation, that I might inspire at least one person. So I started recording videos every day, I remember getting like 12 views on YouTube thinking I was killing it. Like 12 <laughs> views today, right? Crushed it. Yep. And then uh, over time, I built up a following. I lost the weight in 90 days, transformed my life. And um, yeah, through all of that, I've literally kept going. And I'm always thinking, I'm like you, like what's the next level? And I think bodybuilding does that for you. Because if you can start with the physical, like I did and you've done, um, I lost the 40 pounds, got a six pack, got less than like 7% body fat, an amazing shape at the time. And I still am because I've had these transformations over and over and over. I'm always asking what's next. So in business, what's next? Well, in physical body and spiritual reality and in emotional intelligence, what's next? So it's almost like you're moving the meter up on a dashboard like DJ and all the sounds going up at once, like this master keyboard of your life. And, uh, yeah, for me, it's it's completely transformed my life. So we started Organifi four years ago based on the FitLife TV community. We grew a huge, follow, like five and a half million followers with FitLife TV. And then we launched uh, Organic Superfoods, best tasting in the world. I'm a little biased. Um, four years ago, and that's grown substantially. We've been Inc. 500 three times in a row. Um yeah, we just we're helping so many people, which is really, really cool. And that's what it all stems from. It stems from that original conversation with Frank. Do something to impact somebody, regardless of the money, and change your life. Because at the time I was chasing money. Yeah. I was chasing change. And now I'm all about change. I can literally every janitor I see at my gym, I'm hugging them. I'm infectious with my energy. I'm just really trying to shift people into a positive state everywhere I go. And it's not related to anything that deals with work. It's my frequency, right? Now, there's something so, that you're, you're saying in there that I don't want to just gloss over and take for granted. And you're, you're, you're talking about this idea of, you know, what's next. And I think that's extremely powerful. Um, but I think the part that's missing, and I don't want to just um, neglect this, is the fact that in order for there to be a next, you must complete the first. And so obviously somewhere in your in your character, you've developed the ability to see things through to the end. And this is the first thing I tell everyone that comes into my world is my greatest failure as a person has always come if I fail to do something that I say that I'm going to do. 
And so if you, and the first thing I say is, hey, you need to, if you say you're going to do it, you do it. You see it through to the end. Um, so it seems as though you're the type of guy, well, I, I, you know, from what I know of you, man, you seem like you're the type of guy who goes, hey, man, I say I'm going to do this and I do it and I get things done and uh, great things come of that. And then, you, and only then can you actually legitimately say, hey, what's next? What can I do next? So tell us about how you develop that ability and that belief in yourself that no matter what goal you set for yourself, you've already attained it. You, you're going to crush it. Yeah. So with that, I think it's pretty easy. <laughs> it's simple in concept, but it's actually a lot harder than it is because there's a lot of yes people out there, right? I used to be a yes person saying yes to everybody. I wanted to people please. And in people pleasing, you're actually taking from the person, even though you're helping them because mm-hmm. ultimately you probably wouldn't have done it anyway. So with me, big time people pleaser, I had to learn and really cultivate the ability to say no, first of all, and focus only on the things in which I wanted to obtain in my life. And by doing that, it shifted a lot of stuff for me. So working through that continual process over and over, day in and day out, was huge. Um, language is big. I talk about that a lot at Organifi, our office. We're always monitoring and checking in on our language that we use. There's no I can'ts, there's no tries, there's none of that. It's a language of possibility. We're always casting that forth because your words, you're like a magician with your words. You're literally creating your reality. So I understood that. And if I'm going to commit to something um, and it's not in my highest interest, then I get to figure out who I'm going to mentor or delegate that to as an entrepreneur and a business owner. And then inspire and empower them and educate them so that they actually have the tools and the capacity to do it. 70 to 80% as good as me or maybe even more, better than me. Um, And then free up time. So replacing yourself consistently. Because there's a lot of initiatives as entrepreneurs that we want to do that we simply don't have the time to do. Yeah. And you cannot let that get to you for one second where you say you're going to do it and then it doesn't get done because literally you're losing your seniority, you're losing your personal power. And as an entrepreneur and as a human, personal power is very valuable, especially if we talk about going within. Because personal power is also, when we go within, we enter that portal within, heaven is within us, right? It allows us to travel into different systems, different dimensions, different galaxies, if you wanna get deep with it. (laughs) Yeah, no, 100%. Right? So maintaining personal power, and it starts with language. It also is removing all the limitations, all the things that we have chained from us as human beings, from our uh, programming, from our parents, from the government, from the indoctrination, we can call it. We're indoctrinated with a bunch of garbage. Yep. So it's <sighs> Presley Sky, you're born into this world five years ago. Like I want you to know that you are this unlimited little being and I'm trying hard as your dad not to put any of that garbage on you because. Man, I had the conversation with my son last night. You laugh. Um, literally speaking exactly that. And I said, son, you know what? I think you're the strongest boy I've ever met. And the reason I think that is because you don't listen to me. And he goes, yeah. dad, what, he goes dad, what are you talking about? He's six. And he goes, uh, I go, well, you know, I don't want you to always listen to me. I want you to question everything that I say because uh, I want you to be you. And he goes, dad, I think you should say that to mom. <laughs> I think you got to tell mom that. I was like, no, sweetheart. Like, I think it's the most wonderful thing in the world that you challenge everything we say. At the time, you're like, uh, this kid's such a pain in the butt, right? He's just, you know, he wants to question yeah. everything. Like, I don't want to do that. I'm like, but at the, to, to be honest, deep down, I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm fist bumping. And I'm like, this, he's just not going to conform. And I'm like, it's such a beautiful thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So as much as both, most parents are trying to squash their kids over the head with a hammer and say, no, you must fit into this box. Uh, you know, secretly, I just keep my mouth shut and I say, fuck, yeah, like he's not he's not going to anybody's box, you know, uh, which is which is cool, man. Like and, and, you know, I acknowledge that because I realized I had a lot of boxes placed around me, or at least I, I created a lot of boxes around myself as a kid. Um, and I say that because you'll understand when the day you become a dad, no matter what you say or do, it doesn't matter. It's their impression of it. It's their, it's their perception of it that matters. So I have two kids. I could say the exact same thing to them. They get completely different perceptions of it. So uh, no matter what I say to those kids, man, like I have to be so aware of their perception of my words, their perception of the events, you know, like I could be the nicest, kindest man in the world, but they read one thing the wrong way. And all of a sudden they're going in the direction and not really the, the, the conversation of uh, today's podcast, but you get it, man. Like living inside this box is just, uh, it's like hell on earth. Yeah. And I love how you said it's self-created too. the perception that we have 
well, in this. I'll tell you what, kids have been my greatest uh, teacher because as I say something to my son and then I, and I hear it coming back at me four weeks later or some arbitrary amount of time later, I'm like, wow, that's how he took that. That's not how I meant that, but that's how he took that. And you're like, oh, okay. So I'm like, God, I really got to pay attention to not only the words coming out of my mouth, but how exactly I say them and what state of mind is that child in when he's hearing them, you know? If I'm yeah. trying to teach him something when he's not in a great state of mind, that's, maybe that's not the best time to teach it, right? You, you, I mean, you're just molding these kids and, you know, being aware and conscious is, you know, step one, man. But um, it, it's... it's uh, a f- 24 hour a day job. Your, your kids are going to be blessed to know a dad like you, man, who's so consciously aware and evolving himself. Yeah. And you had to have that growing up too. Your parents were probably conscious. Zero. And, Zero. Zero. My, con- my no. parents were the least conscious human beings on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's a blessing and a curse, right? So I look back and, um, you know, my story to myself is I had a hard, you know, quote unquote, it wasn't a hard childhood. It was a uh, lonely childhood. So I, I, I was very much, you know, from the time I was effectively, you know, maybe seven or eight years old, I had some traumatic stuff happen where I just kind of said, fuck you to the world. I'm going to do it myself. It's two middle fingers to the world. And I just went on my own. And, you know, I always had my parents there, but they were never there, if that makes sense. You know, they were friends and uh, never, never parents or mentors. So the complete opposite, which is, you know, the blessing of life sometimes. Yeah, totally. I hear that. Hey, guys, interrupt the podcast to bring you a message from Organifi. So Drew has been so gracious as to offer you guys 20% off. And I'm literally standing here in in my office smelling the Organifi gold. And I kid you not, it's one of the greatest smelling things I've ever smelled in my life. And you're just going to want to open it and and leave it open as a potpourri in your house as it uh, breathes through the air and fills your nostrils with this amazing goodness. Uh, as well as using the greens every morning and the reds post-workout. I love these products. And Drew is going to hook you guys up if you use the code MUSCLEINTELLIGENCE20, MUSCLEINTELLIGENCE20. So, so tell me more about Organifi. Um, uh, you know, I obviously love the idea of, of the book, and there's some more things that I want to come back to, but we brought this up. And um, yeah, why superfoods? Like, tell me why that you know, strung or, or struck a chord in your heart to go like, Hey, I want to, I want to change the world with superfood. Cause you know, speaking, you know, out of turn, I was, am, was, and am the world's biggest advocate for greens. And I was like, every single person that comes into my world, I'm like, the first thing you got to do is like put something in your life. That's going to help give your body micronutrients, help your body detoxify, like support those detoxification processes. And man, you've come up with such an amazing formula. Uh, tell me why. Yeah. So, Liken to you, when I first started Organifi four years ago, I was a huge proponent of juicing. I built the world's largest juicing following. So juicing veggies, right? Not fruit, primarily vegetables. And it's a lot of work. It takes hours sometimes. <laughs> huge pain. The chopping, the cleaning, and the chopping. And it's and, ridiculously expensive. And it's ridiculously expensive. Yep. I mean, even if you go to Whole Foods or another natural store, you're spending 10 to 12 to sometimes 25 bucks for a glass of juice, depending <laughs> on what's in it. Yeah, I've been there, man. When you're living in California, right? Yeah, when you're in yep. California. And I wanted to make it easy, and I wanted to make it convenient for somebody to get started on a healthier path. So greens, first thing in the morning, it reminds you to alkalize, right, to hydrate, to even on a willpower note, like if you start something and you do it every single day, psychologically, you're building up momentum. So as a big proponent of allowing the world's best superfoods, so no fillers, no artificial colors, and at the time there wasn't, right, there wasn't anything that we started four years ago that actually had ancient Ayurvedic technology that tasted good. And when I say Ayurvedic technology, I'm talking about ashwagandha, right? Which is a adaptogen that goes in your body, helps regulate cortisol. It's one of my favorite products, man. I take, you know, at least a hundred milligrams every day and sometimes more. I love it, man. It makes me like this, this, there's some, um, you get it as an entrepreneur where you're constantly on the go. There's some beautiful benefit of just feeling like your body's working better. Yeah. And ashwagandha does that. So first green juice ever to add, um, an ancient Ayurvedic, superfood like ashwagandha into it and we added matcha and we also added mint turmeric chlorella spirulina a bunch of greens 11 different things in uh the real dose so right. versus like throwing the whole kitchen sink in like a lot of green juices right they put 45 50 different things they got 10 mm. milligrams of this 20 milligrams right. of that it's like a piece of dust which does nothing in the body right and you need 30 servings to actually have an efficacious dose yep. and you're pooping your pants out <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Ultimately. Yeah. 
Uh, so we had the real dose. We did our own clinical trials mm -hmm. on it. And what we discovered was that it has big brain benefits. Obviously, the ashwagandha helps with that. Um, neuroprotective benefits. It actually helps. We did the Beck's depression scale on it, too. So it actually helps people stay calm and relieve some of the experience of depression. And then also... Um, good for the body. We saw people's body mass index change substantially in the yeah. clinical trials that we did. Chloro is one of the only ingredients that I, I still take daily that um, actually shows some clinical benefit in detoxing, right? When you say the word detoxing and alkalizing, people are like, oh, shit, here we go. Because, it, there, you know, there's, there's a lot of data that says you can't actually detox your body, but you can support detoxification processes, right? Yeah. Um, you can support uh, elimination. You can support the detoxification of the blood. And chlorella is that one that has the has the greatest amount of research, actually showing getting toxins out of the blood, um, which is uh, why well, I love it. Yeah, and chlorella grows like the superfood's crazy. It replicates itself four times in a period of twenty four hours. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Ast yeah, astronauts eat it in space. It's loaded with omega threes. It's actually a really good fat, and it has the benefit of removing heavy metals from your body as well. Mm -hmm. A lot of research on that helping you know aid in the process of uh removing those heavy metals so i take chlorella on top of organifi green juice i take it every day sometimes two three times a day it uh helps de decalcify the pineal gland as well which is the seat of the soul right they say that you can astral travel and do all those things those psychic gifts when your pineal gland is clean the third eye so i'm all about that and Very interesting. Well, so let, let, maybe there's a conversation to be had there, man. We can't just gloss over that one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's There's been some mystical conversations on the podcast before, man. We, we won't deny that. Um, yeah, so that, that's a very interesting part of you as well, man, that, you know, we'll, we'll come back to talking about some some business stuff because I'm very curious about business. But um, this idea of, um, you know, creating your greatest self means, as we spoke about briefly in the beginning, um, you know, identifying your inner truth, identifying, um, you know, who you are in, inside, creating this journey toward ultimately finding your inner self and, and creating your greatest self. And perhaps visiting uh, different aspects of your being and whether it be in different dimensions or different aspects of your internal self. Tell me about that. Yeah. So one thing I've been doing for the past 10 years is I've been training with a Toltec shaman. And this guy, he Very is cool. Don Juan's only apprentice. His oh, name wow. Is Javier. Yeah. So Carlos Consonator wrote a lot about Don Juan in the yeah. 70s. Yeah. Great books. Journey to Islam. Like lots of really good books. And he talks about Don Juan and the the shaman that I've worked with, the Toltec, um, has changed my life. I mean, for 10 years, I've been doing dream time work with him. So I've died a thousand times. Uh, he literally opens up plant portals in dream time. So explain I what worked, dream time is. So at night, you go yeah. to bed, you set an intention. You remember all your dreams. You have lucid dreams, right? You see your alternate self, your Nawal, they call it. Your Nawal sits above your root chakra. It travels up into your third eye, which allows you to project and travel during the night. Your astral body, we call it. Um, you're literally out of your physical meat suit, right? Your light body, your crystalline body, people call it. Yeah. So when you're traveling at night, you get access to, um, they've done research on this MRI scans, 50,000% uh, more of your brain when you're in a lucid dream when you're in that REM state, as opposed to the waking conscious day. So I use that time at night to learn. I've been in hundreds of different classrooms. I've met guides on different planetary systems, different galaxies. I've had some of the most bizarre conversations like in dream time. And then I come back and I integrate it in this experience, in this now, and um, or at least I attempt to. Sometimes it takes years because I have a tendency to learn a little slow <laughs> sometimes. Sure. Some of the lessons that you're learning in dream time, but it's completely changed my life. Like legitimately, um, I've never done plant medicine, but the experiences that I have at least two or three nights a week is very similar to what my buddies that do a lot of that stuff have told me, like spot on. Right. Yeah. I mean, I've done it a couple of times and it sounds like it's exactly what it is. It's like you're excited to go to bed every night, I'm guessing, man. Tell me about how you, you got there. Is it just, um, sorry, I, his name yeah. is Javier? Yeah, Javier. Javier. So, does he yeah. does he like does he put you through training? Does he call you before bed? Does he give you some herbs? Like what what's the process? Yeah, definitely 
um, for the first nine nights, you're like, doing herbs, you're drinking teas, you're opening up your pineal gland and it's all, it's not illegal stuff. It's all rosemary. It's like ancient Toltec stuff, right? Yep. So, um, and he's the guy that has really worked with me on personal power. Like we talked about, he calls it seniority. When you come to the planet, you have a certain level of seniority and, um, through indoctrination, through limiting beliefs, through all these things we take on as humans, we give it away. We give away our seniority. So to really remember your dream, um, the waking dream and the night dream, because eventually they collapse, right? When I talk about this in the book, UBU. So if you're coherent in the night dream and you're remembering your dreams on the regular and you have the ability to lucid dream, then you have one of the greatest abilities because I think I mean, I've had conversations with what some would probably call God, as much as our limited experience in the human realm is for the word God. We don't even understand it right fully and feeling that and then allowing that to integrate in the 3D plane. But then also seeing the work that you're doing in dream time because I'm a healer. Right. So there's a lot of nights when I'm working in dream time and I'm traveling to people that have. Uh, different illnesses and stuff and I'm laying my hands on them and I'm throwing light at them in dream space and then it reminds me to use that in my uh, waking day here on the planet in the 3d reality so I'm learning at night to bring gifts and tools and resources back into the present day that you and I are sitting in right now and then eventually they just collapse and become one beautiful do you think everyone has the ability to access these things absolutely is everyone yeah. a healer or does everyone have different abilities? I think it's, um, <laughs> I think everybody has different gifts, you could say. Yeah. For different abilities. I think we're all superheroes. I think we're very limited. Um, and I think we've been fed a lot of dogmatic stuff from indoctrination. The box. That holds us tiny. The box is so small. The matrix, right? The box, yeah. the matrix. So... Uh, that's the tone. He, Javier calls it the tonal experience. And you can love this box like you and I both have. Yes. It's, it's beautiful, right? It's strong. I mean, look, what do you, what were you lifting back in the day in your prime? Like you're like superhuman, dude. I was doing a lot. I, I, yeah, I, yeah. Like, like you fall in love with the box. Yeah. So many people fall in love with it so much that it becomes a black hole. And no matter what you buy, and we've talked about this, no matter what, experiences you create what you buy what you have all these things that will never be fulfilled if you don't understand truly who you really are and what you're here to do and so much beauty in that and this is the conversation i try to get across to people with my journey having left professional bodybuilding was you know i spent you know the better part of 20 years of my life uh accumulating you know and what and some people accumulate muscle and some people accumulate money and some people accumulate you know tangible things uh, and you get to the top of this proverbial mountain and you go, fuck, this isn't what I thought it was going to be. I'm alone. I'm lonely. Uh, I'm just as fearful and insecure as, as, I, as I was when I started. Um, yeah, man, how do we begin? Uh, you know, uh, short of reading your book, which you know, I'm going to go pick up now. <laughs> um, <laughs> short of reading that book, like, you know, we've got, call it, you know, 50,000 people listening to your podcast right now. Um, what do you tell them? I think it's um, number one, start with the physical body. It's a great thing. So you can love the 3D, you can love the toenail, but if your neurons and the hormones and the serotonin and the dopamine and the neurochemicals aren't processing the right way, then those other realms, you're not gonna be able to get to, right? Like your body has to become um, a temple, like take care of it. So the reason we launched Organifi was to provide the world's greatest superfoods so that people could actually cleanse Support the cleansing process so that your light body actually becomes lighter and you can start to really change the frequency of the planet. But if you're drinking every weekend, if you're eating processed food, sugar, dairy, wheat, all these things, and you're not doing the superfoods, the greens, the cruciferous vegetables, all the stuff that's been around us this whole entire time, then you're limiting who you can ultimately be. So I would say start there. And it's so simple. You probably talk about this all the time, like hydration, water every single day, making sure you're getting your – your people know this, right? Yeah. But it's making sure you're committed to it. Uh, tell me about your daily meditation practice. Um, 
it's starting to, you know, obviously we're, I want to come back to getting into the, the greens and the, and the, the, the nutrition aspect of it. But I think that to keep it a, as a seamless conversation, is there a daily meditation practice or is it the, just the dream time? So there is a daily meditation practice and it changes every day. I don't have like a ritual around meditation. Um, uh, I would say 20 to 30 minutes. I'll sit silently. I'll look at a candle. Sometimes I'll do like an ancient Ayurvedic fire ceremony at my house. I'll burn some stuff out on the porch. Like, um, sometimes it's just breath work in my meditation, right? I do all that. But more for me, it's stopping, I would say every hour, every two hours throughout the day and just becoming vastly present in the moment. To me, that's meditation and that's cultivating personal power. So becoming here right now without the thoughts, because you know, as human beings, we have 3,000 conversations going on at once sometimes and it's so noisy. So drowning out the noise, looking around you, giving thanks to your ancestors. So the trees, the plants, the rocks, if you're out in nature, thank you. Thank you for being here, supporting me now, connecting to that and just being still. So my meditation exists. And when I'm in this place, when I don't know anything, right? Delphi said to Socrates, you're the wisest man in the nation because Socrates said, I don't know anything. And I think when you come into this world with that attitude, I don't know anything. I'm not a master, right? I'm still learning. Then the noise shuts down. And that gives you personal power in the moment and the ability to infect people with more light, more love, more inspiration, that kind of stuff. You're just a blank slate. So that's my meditation. I'm trying to be a blank slate all day, every day, like just peace. (laughs) That's beautiful. And that I think is where the um, nutrition piece comes in. And um, because so many people are uh, looking for something outside of themselves to medicate themselves. People are looking for that instant, you know, dopamine hit from Instagram, dopamine hit from shopping, dopamine hit or serotonin from their food, alcohol, uh, rather than realizing that, hey, all I need is uh, to be alone and to think and to clear the slate. And all these low level anxieties or high level anxieties that we live with and the constant, you know, mind chatter, you're in control of your ability to take it away. Um, the nutrition piece to that is, you know, so many people are overeating because they're trying to self-medicate. And I think once you start to realize that you can, um, you know, quote unquote, medicate or take care of yourself with your, by yourself, now it's just a matter of fueling yourselves with the highest quality fuel, right? That's the beauty of, of uh, you know, what you're talking about is, um, you know, all these vegetables and, and, and organic things and organic superfoods. And, you know, even the reds is something I'm massively interested in. I use it every day post-workout. Um, I think that's where people start to open up to the idea of actually fueling their body rather than um, self-medicating with food. I think so, too. And when you look at food as energy versus um, emotional, helping yes. you with emotions, and medicine, like you said. Yeah. It's just energy. Like how much life force is in a pile of pizza, right? <laughs> Even though the pizza is awesome, like I'm from Michigan. I love a big pie. Like that's one of my favorite <laughs> cheeses ever. Right. But how much life force is really in it? And not that you can never eat that again, like banish it, but it's so you feel so much better when you're 80 to 90 percent of the time on point. And I lived that reality for 20 years as, um, you know, the belief that I need to consume massive amounts of food. And I always feel like shit, uh, you know, sorry, pardon my language, but uh, yeah. I, was, I always, you know, was fighting against yourself. And then as soon as you realize you don't need that much and what you do put in is supposed to be making you feel better, not making you feel worse. And that simple paradigm shift is very, very powerful. Like if I eat this, do I feel good? Well, why the hell am I going to keep eating it? Even if my coach or my, you know, some Instagram star or YouTube star says you're supposed to eat chicken every day, but you eat chicken and feel like shit don't eat chicken. <laughs> it's a, you know, it's really, really that simple, right? And finding those foods that fuel you, um, yeah. fuel your ability to, to perform, you know, like a fighter jet to use our friend, uh, Bedros Koulian's term, right? Yeah. Um, you know, fuel, fuel your body like a fighter jet. So coming back to this piece, man, so you've got a few other, uh, products that, like I said, you sent me some, I've been using them for a better part of two years. Um, you know, the, the particularly the greens and now you've got reds and Organifi gold. Tell me about that. Yeah, so red uh, that you said you have after pre-workout, yeah. it's, it's got rhodiola, 
beets, berries, loaded with antioxidants, cordyceps. Cordyceps are actually one of the most clinically researched mushrooms on the planet. Mm -hmm. Amazing for endurance, amazing for energy, and it kind of tastes like Kool-Aid. Like it tastes really good just mixed in water. People become obsessed with it. I got a lot of friends in the Midwest still, and many of them were drinking like soda, right? Soda's like the new <laughs> you, you say that, you're like, it's like the way, the way I look at people smoking. I, say like, I don't know if I want to say that I'm friends with these people right? <laughs> at this point yeah. because. It, it's mind blowing to think people still drink, like, and like Coca Cola still exists, and so does McDonald's. So not everyone's as, as normal as we think they are, right? Yeah. I I'm like getting ready to whisper it. It's like, hey, <laughs> drink a bunch of soda. <laughs> um, it's like meth or something, you know? Yeah. Um, but they've drifted away from it because of the red juice because it's so sweet. There's no sugar in it. Tastes absolutely less than one gram of sugar, natural sugar, right? Tastes amazing. It's got a little lohan in it, which is a medicinal um, super fruit that actually is 400 times more sweeter than like sugar but it doesn't have any of the blood spiking insulin raising effects, which is key. Right. Cause I'm a low sugar guy. I like, yeah, I, I think everyone evolved is, is. I, I think we're trying to become immortal. Right. Yeah. And I think glycemic variability is the key. So I'm trying to keep it low all day, every day. Mm -hmm. Red juice is awesome. Gold tastes incredible. Right. So everyone is afraid of this thing. And my, my yeah. uh, business manager has been bugging me for months. She's like, Ben, you got to try this. I'm like, ah, I don't want to eat, eat this stuff. It's like, I'm, I'm guessing it's going to taste like curry or something, right? <laughs> She's like, no, you got to try it. It tastes amazing. I'm like, all right, let me try this thing. And it's, it's really good. Yeah. At night, a little, uh, you could do coconut milk or just water and you put it in hot water, this tea. It's like this Ayurvedic tea. And it's as if Autumn had a baby with a marshmallow. So, <laughs> your mouth. It's so incredible. Yeah, absolutely amazing. So that's the gold. And then we got plant-based protein as well for Organifi. And all of it is the best sourced from the best farms. Um, and it's because we actually care. It, we're not trying to um, create something with a bunch of fillers in it. There's no fillers. There's no artificial sweeteners. There's no dairy. There's nothing in there that isn't 100% something that could impact you on a vibrational uh, health level. Man, I love it. And, you know, to be honest, like I'm such an advocate of greens and, and reds. You know, one of the ingredients I, I eat every day is berries. Like I eat berries every single day of my life on purpose. Um, you own the green and red space, man. Like I, if you didn't, I would be in it right now. And I'm like, you know what? I, there's nothing I would do better. Then Organifi. So what, I'm, what am I going to do? Like, like, hey, I want to come in and create a green and reds juice. I'm like, no, man, this is it's already there. It's 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 excellent. You guys did an amazing job, and I, and I give you. you guys, I give you massive credit, man. Uh, you know that not the point of the conversation, but tell me, tell me when the book comes out, man, and how do I get myself an advanced copy? <laughs> yeah, book uh, ububook.com. Yeah, so you can get it there, ububook.com. And when you buy two, you can actually you get a ticket to come see me in San Diego. We're having a live event, which is awesome, October 19th. Very cool. And um, a video course, a bunch of stuff uh, that we talked about, personal power checklist, self-love checklist at ububook.com. And um, it comes out October 16th, so it's a pre-order now. But you get all the bonuses when you order today. And uh, it's awesome. We've already... Man, published by Hay House, as we spoke about, man, that's a big deal. Like, you know, for the listeners that don't know, that's, that's a big deal, man. That, that's like an accomplishment, right? That's top of the totem pole. Thank you, my brother. Yeah, man. Yeah, they're great. Reed Tracy, Louise Hay. I mean, you you know because you grew up reading and listening to Wayne Dyer. Yeah. He's put his audio books on in car rides and just – Never ending, man. I, yeah. You know, for, for two hours before bed, I'd sit in bed and I'd just listen to Wayne and I'd learn how to meditate. Like everyone goes, how do you learn how to meditate? I go, Wayne Dyer. Man, where else do you learn how to meditate, right? It was 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah. You, you actually look like a yoked, younger – like Wayne Dyer, dude. Hey, man. You look Wayne Dyer. So I, I'll be honest. I made that intention when I went, first went to his seminar. I go, I want to live his life. I want to become a world-renowned author for helping people change their life. That's my ultimate destiny. That's my ultimate like result. Uh, when I saw him and I saw him, his beautiful relationship with his daughter, that's where that came from, man. It's like, I was like, I want to have that relationship with my kids. I want to be influencing people like this. Like people just. He was just touching so many people's lives, and his books were just amazing. And he had such a beautiful story on how he got there, and you know the idea of um, you know how he wrote his books, and he'd go take trips to Hawaii and just sit there and write. I'm like, that's exactly it. Yeah, he's awesome, man. He's got eight kids too, which is nuts. Yeah. So, 
Yeah, I don't think I'll ever get that. Maybe I will, man. Who knows? <laughs> I'm working on it. Work in progress. You right? got two or do you got three? Uh, I have two plus a stepson, so three. You got three babies. Cool. Yeah, man. 11, six, and five. And if I don't get started soon, well, I got time. <laughs> <laughs> man. Yeah. Uh, Drew, awesome man. And you know, one thank you for the uh, information about the book. Thank you for letting us know about Organifi. Um, you know, great products. And you know, I think all the listeners should check them out. Uh, where do they check out uh, you and yeah. Organifi? So Organifi.com. You can go there. And I believe, do we create a coupon code for you yet? Do we have one of those? I have no idea, man. But we can link to it in the show notes. Yeah, we'll link to it in the show notes, and the coupon will be good for like 20% off, which is awesome for all oh, wow. your people listening to Thank this. Thank you. Thank you, man. The family that you have over there. Hell yeah. <laughs> Got to feed so, my little monsters, man, my little angels. Yeah, Organifi.com. And I love what you're doing, man. Um, so thank you for having me on the show. I love where you're headed because you're very, you've evolved so much from 10 years ago, and it's cool to see that that people that have influence that are inspiring so many people's lives in podcasts and with what you do is actually on a really cool trajectory. So thanks for being that demonstration today for me. Thanks, man. And and it's a hard thing. And I'll let all the listeners know, you know, I fight with it daily, the idea of it, it's hard to leave one thing and become something else, man. So, uh, Drew, thank you very much for being here, man. I appreciate it. And, uh, I'm sure I'll run into you again soon. I'm in San Diego next month. I'll hit you up. Hey, come on. Let's grab some lunch or something. All right, man. We'll hit up Javier. (laughs) All right, buddy. See you, buddy. Sounds good. Have a good one, man. Join us on BenPokolsky.com to learn the cutting-edge techniques to take control of your body, your brain, and create your greatest life. This podcast is for information purposes only. The statements and views on this podcast are not medical advice. This podcast, including Ben Pikulski and the producers, disclaim responsibility for any possible adverse effects from the use of information contained herein. Opinions of guests are their own, and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. This podcast does not make any representations or warranties about guest qualifications or credibility. This podcast may contain paid endorsements or advertisements for products or services. Individuals on this podcast may have a direct or indirect financial interest in products or services referred to herein. If you think you have a medical problem, consult a licensed physician.